Wow, hi, hello. <laughs> I feel like this week has completely flown by. I don't even actually remember what happened at all, but I do know it is currently Saturday of the week that I was meant to vlog. So suffice it to say, <laughs> we're gonna do another week, week on top of that because I didn't really vlog. I didn't have it in me. We just came back from Logan's sister's wedding and that was lovely and we were hosting a little bit. Uh, people here and there and just you know whatnot um, I have finished this book so you know how I ended the previous vlog on a very high note being like oh this is so fun I can just put it on and off whenever I want to it's perfect because it's short stories and it's short <laughs> did you not have pants on? I've got pants on! oh okay <laughs> I get why you asked so I was very excited and I really liked the first couple of stories, however, unfortunately I do think that they kind of go downhill, there's one or two later on um, that I still enjoyed, but a lot of them felt, which was my initial kind of hesitation, a little, a little pretentious, a little bit hitting, missing the mark. Um, but I did finish it and I did enjoy some of them, especially at the beginning. I do think that the beginning couple ones were just much, much stronger than um, the remaining ones. I will say, of course, that's always the risk when you go in for short stories, but I didn't, I didn't, you know, struggle to finish this and I, I enjoyed my time with it. So it's, it's not, it's not a loss, but it's not as much as a win <laughs> as I was maybe anticipating it being from the very start. But this does mean that I have passed letter Q. Well, I haven't yet passed letter Q, but this is for letter Q of, of psionics and divination. So we have the first first one marked off on this side of the sheet. Um, I haven't yet passed it, however, because that requires me having crossed off the O. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh my god! Cats are being really cute because, you know, we left them overnight. <laughs> so now they're like, you're back! Um, so I do need to pass O for this to officially count, which is this, which I actually have also started, but to the point where I honestly don't have that much to say because I think I am only a couple of... I've decided just to go with the Mindwalkers bookmark for this one. Um, because the Cyanix and Divination one, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it wasn't in, in this one, so I was like, I was double dipping there for a second. Well, I do think that I have made not enough progress this week, but we still have today. I, mm, I don't know how much I can do <laughs> today. Uh, maybe, I don't know, it depends what Logan's plans are. Uh, maybe I can still do some reading. I don't know if I have it in me, but we'll see. Uh, but I do have to play a little bit of catch up. At some point we also have so much cleaning to do that it's, it's depressing me, honestly. I, I do feel a little bit behind on where I would like to be. So we have some work to do. So hopefully, hopefully we can do that soon. But I do have some good news and that is something that I've spent a couple of evenings doing, but I still need to do. The Aurelian pens have arrived and they are fine this time which is great so i'm just doing some quality checks and stuff i don't i haven't actually told anyone yet that it they are here because i still haven't finished the check so i want to do that so i know for sure that they're here and they're good and they're ready and then hopefully i can do that as well i'm very excited so we made a little game uh me reed steen and connor was also there so there's these little things called game jams where people try and make a game within a certain period of time. So we made this in seven days. Reed was our main programmer. I did the art assets for the things that are moving about and the tokens and the rest was like stock things. So you have to go from one side, the map, to the other and survive. It's nice and easy to survive the first way because everything's friendly apart from like the, the big, the big pitfalls. And then when you reach the end, the storm happens, and your bird becomes hostile, and the frogs become fucking weird. It's based off Dean's D and D character. Host, uh, I believe in you. You shouldn't. God damn it! I was doing okay here mm. before. We did not spend much time at all. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, level design, we could have maybe, maybe um, smoothed out a bit. <laughs> yeah. 
it had to be it's submitted okay. last <laughs> night. So. What happens if you win? Uh, you just get a little screen saying how many coins or talismans. No, I mean, like, if you guys win the competition. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Did you see the other ones? Um, we're sitting playing through some of them just now, because what you can do is, if you play the other games that other people have submitted, yeah. it's more likely to show your game like higher up on oh, the how list. How many people are there? I think it's been 1,500 1, games have been submitted. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. But you learn how to do stuff now. Yeah, like I learned how to do the, the sprite sheet. Those are hard to get for the it's first time one. that I went. Oh no. You, you did make it here faster than I did. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Fucked up frogs. I'm good at that part. Yeah, that bit, that bit took me a while to get the hang of that little jump. Considering that I'm not great at these games. Like the... Oh man! Oh shit, shit. Shit! <laughs> oh, you almost tricked the bird. <laughs> Not quite. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is where I. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you go. <laughs> this is where I gave up because I didn't make it to the end. Huh? Oh, no, I lost this. A heart. Yeah, I, I kept fucking up that single tile jump because <laughs> I wasn't patient. Shit, 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 shit. <laughs> <laughs> didn't realize it's just gonna go back to the. Start. Damn it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was close. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Ah, there's like, there's no winning here. <laughs> I think it does a good job of putting that kind of like frustrating pressure on you. Like, you're like, ah! Like, like, there's, ah! there's nothing really happening, but it induces panic. A thousand. What? A thousand. Kingdom of a thousand, what? The hundred thousand kingdoms. Right. I am not far in, like, 40 pages, but I'm far enough to, like, kind of give you an idea of what the book is about whilst I make us fish and chips for dinner. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> I think I had this exact meal pretty much in the previous video. That's because I got it in a pack of four, so we still have two left. <laughs> Random fact, but I love these um, trays. I found that these last so much better than the um, the kind of even ones. They wash better in a dishwasher and also cook better. I found. However, I am putting foil on this one just because I don't. I can't be bothered. <laughs> so our main character, Yene. I actually can't remember how to pronounce it now. I will come back to you about that later. <laughs> Um, I feel like I, whenever I talk to you, I'm just like... <laughs> I'm in character! In the wake of her mother's uh, death, she travels to see her granddad, who doesn't normally, you know... They're not like Levi Debi. This is, this is someone who rules kingdoms and does not normally acknowledge grandkids that much. So when he does single her out and wants to see her, she's immediately sus. Rightfully so. <laughs> she quickly learns that she's being selected as one of the potential inheritors to the kingdoms um, alongside, I think, three others? But that does mean that now there's gonna be some sort of power struggle between these selected people, which means that she is in danger and she didn't necessarily want this, to be in this position to begin with. Um, so I believe the story is going to be about navigating that. Um, obviously, the name of the book is The Thousand Kingdoms. Um, so the kingdoms will be relevant, I'm presuming. But there's also gods. And these gods appear in very interesting shapes and forms. Like one of them is just like in a shape of a kid. But obviously you understand from their power that they're not. It's, it's, it's already quite interesting. The main character also gems back and forth and her retelling of what's happening and at one point, you know, at the, the beginning of chapter 3 she directly spoke to us, the reader, being like, okay, let me back up for the storytelling purposes. Um, don't know if we're always gonna get told that we're backing up, but it is helpful, so hopefully. Um, but of course, it, it will take me a little bit, I think, to grasp what we're doing. Um, but so far, so good. I'm not, I'm not as immediately 
excited about it and uh, impressed by it as I was with the fifth season, but that is a very high standard for me to match, so um, understandable. But it's going, it's going well. I'm currently doing sprints with Patreon, and well, I'm currently cooking, but we are in a sprint with Patreon. Then I'm gonna be sorting the next chapter of the lore quests. I'm gonna be working on the quality checks for the uh, pins, which does allow me to listen to an audiobook because it's a very manual task. It does not require a lot of thinking, which is fantastic because I do need thinking when I'm reading this. And um, equally, I do really want to do, uh, want to read this physically for a portion of it at least. So, um, so I'm hoping to do a little bit of that later as well. I feel like I've just literally been running around for three days straight and I look like it. <laughs> I am washing my hair and becoming presentable tomorrow. So there's that. <laughs> Until then, I'm afraid you're stuck with this. An update, because what I've been reading this week, granted, in between of a lot of other running around and doing things, this pains me so incredibly much. I hope you understand how much I'm not exaggerating, just how much it pains me to say, because this is a prompt of reading a debut book by your one of your favorite authors. So by that alone, I don't want to hear any bullshit, because obviously I picked it because it's one of my favorite authors. But I am buying, I am buying the scroll of closure, because I can't do I I gave it such a good shot, and there's nothing inherently wrong with the book, but I think I can really feel just how unpolished this is in comparison to the fifth season for example and you know maybe this is because it was a debut or maybe this is just not the correct time for me there's so much monologuing going on or there's so much descriptions and we spend so much time talking about things that i feel like are so secondary and i genuinely feel like i've spent this entire experience of this book reading about the same conversation I just don't have it in me and I gave it a very good shot I gave it a very fair shot page 166 and again not the fastest reader so this you know I've spent a decent amount of time with this but I am spending my points on a scroll to still count this because you know 166 pages nothing to frown upon if I read it and only like 20 pages I probably would not use a scroll and just go on and find a different book the responsible thing to do here so I don't fail the rest of my TBR is to move on because I just really need to get going with the rest of it I am afraid that this is going to take too long I'm clearly not into it so we're doing the responsible reader thing and we're putting it aside and I'm still passing the thing because I'm spending my money on the, the scroll, which got, like, honestly, so, <laughs> so I didn't anticipate using it for myself this round especially. And uh, I really hope this is the only one, but I still have quite a few books to go through. I, uh, this week has felt a, li a little bit like I wasn't even a readathon girly, you know, and I don't like that. So we're moving away and we're continuing. I'm hoping to get to reading something else today and update you on that but not the, oh, not the best outcome i am passing the o in psionics and divination which means i only need the last grade in that which is the evocation which i'm actually that was the one that i was the most nervous about so please this maybe the psionics and divination is just not the best of times <laughs> for me this year maybe this is my struggle subject who knows
we are post um, excursion. Okay. Now we have uh, just waiting a little bit until the boards kind of dry up a little bit before we pack up. Least favorite part, obviously, but it's very beautiful here, uh, so I don't mind it. And for once in my life, it's actually not windy and it feels like a different country, which is nice. But the sun is pretty much down, so we're probably gonna skidoodle now. Mm -hmm. I've started not one but two reads just now, <laughs> well today. Um, in the morning I've started reading this but I didn't have that much time uh, before I logged on to work so I've only just started but I really love the art style. I mean I knew that that I'm gonna love it but also I've, uh, we watched a couple of episodes of uh, Chaos recently. Um, not entirely sold on that show but I, I love the kind of American Gods situation you know theme wise and this one the fact that you know this we start off with death being invited to like this office for some sort of meeting and it just i'm vibing already i've also started uh evocation look at this sexy cover these updates are ridiculous considering how little i actually have to update you on I've introduced to the two main characters and i'm already really really enjoying it i think it's just such a nice pace of like change of pace after my previous read when I don't know. I'm also having quite high hopes because one, I have a couple of books by the author and I've never tried them before. So I'm really excited for that reason. Number two is that I'm kind of hoping this is gonna be what I wanted Masters of Death to be, um, but I didn't quite vibe with decisions being made there and the writing style and a lot of things just didn't quite work out for me. It is Friday, so I'm a little bit, a little bit tired after the, the it was it has been a, like a weird week, but at the same time I'm very excited because I have a lot of exciting things to begin with. So literally in 12 minutes, um I have the pin sale which this is that's why I'm so jittery. <laughs> I thought I'll pull up a camera so I have someone to talk to so I don't just sit there like um, I always get a little bit nervous before the release. Always a bit nervous for any type of technical difficulties. I hope that everything goes okay. I do have some books that got delivered um, from Fairy Loot that I would like to show you, but I think I'm gonna maybe do that after. Um, but I also have a very, very, if you are a fan of Over the Garden Wall, um, I have something also exciting to share that uh, has arrived earlier this week and I just kept it in a bag so I can actually show you before I put it on and just live in the vibes because ain't that just the way okay i'm gonna go make sure that everything is set up okay everything is fine all is all is well <laughs> let's do it here we go zeus is here for emotional support guys <laughs> oh, i hate when this happens but i i slept so poorly like so so poorly and a lot of the times like after i have a bad night's sleep i feel actually great <laughs> the next day but from time to time i feel like i've been run down by a truck and i don't know if it's because this week has like been i don't know quite a lot um, but not even in a bad way though so i don't know i feel so bad which would be fine if it wasn't the all night or day <laughs> i still i mean i've been trying to kind of like because sometimes I'll snap out of it, like it'll just change like this. But I've taken like, I have so much facial pain today. It just adds on to it, of course. Um, you know, just keeping it real, keeping it real with you. Oh, you want a little cutie? Where's this little cutie? Oh, let go. Where's this little cutie? Hmm? Oh, well, you must be very sleepy. It doesn't normally let me do this to you. Not this way, yeah? Three hours. <laughs> I spent like three hours polishing and, and, and sorting out the next lore quest bit. So I think people are gonna be excited about it, I hope. Um, I don't actually know how many people are actually doing the side quest. I need to maybe chill and, and, and reel it back if not a lot of people do it. Um, I still want to continue, but maybe I should reevaluate how much effort I put into it, like time wise, because I don't want to be stupid with it. Um, but it doesn't help that I have like two settings. It's either not nothing at all or like, although I would say that I'm getting better about it throughout the years, better, you know, but better doesn't mean much when your baseline is extreme. 
but a lot of the time when I feel like not great also after like the first hour or so of the sprints like I also get better I don't know if it's, it's something about it's either that or it gets much worse so I'm really hoping for the first but we literally have an hour 45 minutes until we start which is crazy because I really thought I would be like a bit more awake but I haven't done my hair well I've, I've washed my hair yesterday so that's that's great but I want to uh, curl it hair or my makeup yet and I think sometimes that like just getting ready and getting to be a bit more put together helps as well and now I have this like thing where it's a bit annoying because I would prefer to have contacts in for my stream because I sit in front like not in front of the window but the window is like this and then the screen obviously also reflects on my glasses so I feel like whenever I'm streaming and I have my glasses on uh, like it's fine but it's it's very reflective and it's kind of um distracting for myself however <laughs> I can't really read well with my contacts so I could see how I feel on that but I don't want to give myself like more head pain if I'm reading on with you know contacts when they're not working <laughs> that well for reading like I'm fine with them like if I'm just doing stuff but when it comes to like reading we haven't quite found the correct like we tried different like versions but we haven't quite found the correct numbers i think it's maybe because i don't know the stigmatism or something I, i'm not sure why but it sometimes it feels better sometimes it feels worse so i could see how that is or alternatively then i can opt in for an audiobook but i would quite like to just sit down and and do some physical reading i feel like i kind of miss it and it's kind of gloomy outside and it's that kind of weather but at the same time i don't know if that's going to be possible because of my glasses <laughs> which is so silly but mm, hello Hello, how are you doing today? It, I'm also not undecided on what to wear, but that's like a not a problem. <laughs> Hello, currently still sprinting, but since my camera died and unplugged itself from the computer, either way, I thought I might take this opportunity to update you on how it's going. We are on <laughs> teen hours left. I have been live streaming for five hours just now over five hours i think it's going well i hope you guys are enjoying it i have finished this i really enjoyed it it was really really good um it's that kind of premise that i like god and the god is basically saying hey someone is born on earth who is going to eradicate a more like mortality so we have no point of you being here anymore so they make her immortal and she goes down to earth but she before she goes she asks a favor to of someone who knows her um to be sent somewhere close to the person who is uh going to do that in 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 kind of hopes of preventing that and then we follow her through her many deaths hence the name it's really good i really enjoyed it it's uh, such a stunning art style as well i think if you like similar vibe stuff to me you would probably enjoy it as well it's definitely going to be a four star don't quite know if it's going to be a five but you know what it's the most recent like uh, comic that i've enjoyed in in years now i feel like this is the first one that i feel you know I'd put it close to Day Tripper. Nothing is quite like Day Tripper, but I would put it close to Day Tripper of my enjoyment and stuff. So, very good. And that does mean I passed my alchemy. I only needed the O, so I can go and mark that off. Honestly, today, whoop, I really went sideways there. Today, I have made way more prog progress in general than any other day of this week which is fabulous because of course it is the all-nighter but at the same time all-nighters normally mean a lot of other extra work so I'm obviously not getting as many hours of reading but I've been really enjoying hosting this one and I hope that people are having a lot of fun I think it's going well so hopefully that is you know based on the vibes putting out uh, i'm also been really impressed by you guys's reading not only the fact that i now saw the you know kind of graph that does tell me that we are doing really well compared to last year as well i mean we're under but like we're on the same trajectory so it was very nice to see um and then also in these sprints we keep trying to like up each other well up ourselves from the last sprint to see if we can read more and more and more 
and uh, so far I've been it's it's just very impressive numbers but my current read after that and I also kind of dipped in and out between like I kind of swapped them around but I was sitting on the couch reading this physically as well it's evocation uh, and this is another one this is very paranormal which I'm currently clearly very much vibing with David who goes and summons dead spirits and speaks to them and that's his side business um, and his ex Reese who is now married to Moira who reads like astrology charts and, and tarot cards and uh, Reese himself goes and does like spirit stuff as well <laughs> um, and during one of the summonings um, something not quite right happens to David. He feels like someone interfered, something's happened, and he's got quite, like, spooked, which he doesn't normally do. So he goes to the people who he thinks would be able to help, but they have difficult history, there's some beef. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of tension between them, and he still keeps trying to, like, ask for help, but he's also very proudful. So there's, like, a lot of... But, like, I'm only... You know, I'm not very far. I am... Well, now I am... Uh, like 60 pages in but I was you know even before that I feel like I really got a very clear sense of who the characters are and I think to achieve that uh, whilst introducing other parts of the world as well and and you know other things um, to paint the picture of the characters which I do think this is going to be a character heavy book like I think the characters are going to play the key role in this like, it's not an easy thing to do, so I'm quite impressed by that. Like, I can, I, I know what the vibe of Moira is and the dynamic is with, with one another. And this is why I really like the number, like, three or four, um, when they, we focus on the characters and there's other characters, but they're just not that important and you get to know the other ones really well. And I know that sometimes I will read a book and sometimes it's hard for me to know who is who and how exactly they work. But if you already put me in a situation and be like, in this situation, what do you think Moira would say? Or in this situation, what do you think David would say? I already can kind of guess whether I would be right or not. That's like a different thing. But I can kind of guess what they would. And to me, that is a major, major green flag. So it's a bit too early to say how much I'm going to like this, but it's... I'm just having a good day today with reading which is so so needed um but yes i'm gonna go back i need to prepare our emporium item that you guys crafted and logan drew um and make sure that everything is ready i have like 10 minutes of this sprint left so i kind of spent 50 minutes because we're doing our block sprints which is a lot but um it's to make up for you know it's the all-nighter ones we have to keep it big um, but yeah, it's to make up for the chatty bits as well. Can you hear the cats? Oh, okay, let me do the thing. Um, but I'm glad that I got this in here. Um, hopefully I can still get a little bit more reading in before. Uh, but I'll probably only see you tomorrow for that. <laughs> the stream is finished. It was eight hours. I am so tired mainly well i mean i'm always a little bit tired after these but i think it's mainly because i just slept so badly but we did it and i had such a good time i really hope people did as well um but i'm gonna pack it in i think i'm gonna make a mistake and i'm gonna go sit on the sofa and then get way too tired <laughs> and then i'll have to force myself to get up clean my face wash my face and go to bed but um yay <laughs> I am up. We still have six hours left. Not too bad. Not too bad, considering that I didn't get to bed for quite late because uh, it did take me a little while to fall asleep, but I slept so much better. I slept so much better in comparison to the other night, so we're going to take it as a big win. Um, I did also do a little bit more reading, which I'm also very proud of myself for before um, I switched off. So, I am currently at, like, page 95. So, you know, getting getting there. Um, and hopefully I can sit and just do nothing but read until... Well, not maybe do nothing and read until 4 p.m. But 4 p.m. is when the all-nighter finishes. And I don't know if I'll be able to finish the book until then. But wouldn't it be fantastic if I did? So we might attempt it. Um, did I show you the edition properly? I think it's stunning. 
I mean, I'm a bit biased, but I think it's stunning. Um, have the edges. We have the details. We have the end papers. So this is Moira and Reese. And this is David. That's the dust jacket because I did take it off uh, with foil. And then kind of like a reverse type of situation. Ah, see now as he's just playing, he, I don't know what it is, but I swear to God, that cat is camera shy. Every time he does something, um, as soon as I point my camera towards him or even my phone, he gets like so shy, he literally like freezes and he's just like, no, doing nothing. I keep saying that I'm gonna show you the books and then I keep not showing you the books. So I'm gonna show you some books. I might start with the most um, exciting one. We have this set. This is, it has like pastel pages, so I don't know if my filter is gonna erase that, but it has a map on the edges. And this is, you'll recognize it, I think, after the first name, the Yang E Leeds. Um, Stang Spines, I think it looks so beautiful on the shelves. Oh, this is the third one, sorry. The Rose Society being the second one. Um, I'll just show you this and then we can go and rest them. <laughs> and the Midnight Star. Beautiful, beautiful. We have the hardbacks with the foil and a quote on the back. And we have these end papers. I have read Legend last year or the year before by Mary Lou and actually really enjoyed it and I would like to try work cross although I do hear like mixed things but I actually enjoyed it I would maybe even consider you know um continuing legend I did like it enough to do that I just like got distracted as I always do with all the other books but I'll read the synopsis of the first one just so um we can kind of know but Adelina Amatiru is a survivor of the blood fever marked by a jagged scar where her left eye once was. Branded as a malfetto, an abomination, she is cast out from all she has ever known and loved. Adelina, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but finds sanctuary with other malfettos and discovers that the disease has left her with more than just a scar. She has a mysterious and powerful gift. But Adelina's ability is stronger than any young elite uh, before her. And unless she can control the vengeful darkness growing in her heart, Adelina could be a danger to them all. So we're continuing almost like with the um, dystopian vibes that I feel this author might be quite into, which I'm not mad at. I actually really am um, hoping for a dystopian trend to come back. So if you're an author watching this and you care for some reason or what I think, <laughs> I think it would be fun. The end papers of the second one with this stunning design here. I love that it looks like there will be, you know, a friendship as well. That's important. End paper for the last one. And the cover. Um, all of these are fairy loot, by the way, apart from this one that I'm showing you right now. Uh, it is a dark and drowning tide. Uh, by Alison Saft. This just came in and it is an Illumi Crate um, one. It's a pretty cover. I will say this book is so heavy for what it is, but beautiful. This is very gorgeous. This is also very, very pretty. Um, not on the side. If you guys know, you know um, that I am Sea setting is not my friend. In real life it is. In in books, it ain't. <laughs> but let me read the synopsis. I'm just gonna take the jacket because again, this is such a brick. So heavy. Laura Lael Caskell, a, fol a folklorist with a quick temper and an even quicker wit, is on an expedition with six eccentric nobles in search of a mythical spring of untold power. The king wants to harness the fabled water source from which magic flows to secure his reign and Lorelei is determined to prove herself and to make her dream come true. 
to become a naturalist able to travel freely to faraway lands. The expedition gets off to a harrowing start when Lorelei's beloved mentor is murdered in her quarters aboard the ship. Uh, the suspects are her five remaining expedition mates. The only person Lorelei knows must be innocent is her longtime ac academic rival, the insufferable gallant and maddeningly beautiful Sylvia von Wolf. Now in charge of the expedition, Lorelei must find the spring before the murderer strikes again and a coup begins in earnest. But other Dangers lurk in the dark forest that rearrange themselves at night, rivers with slumbering dragons hiding beneath the wind, uh, water, and shape-shifting beasts out of for blood. As Laurelia and Sylvia grudgingly work together to uncover the truth and resist their growing feeling for each other, they discover that their leader and had secrets of their own. Secrets that make Laurelia question whether justice is worth pursuing and if this kingdom is worth saving at all. All right, all right. Perhaps. I like the mystery aspect of it. Next, we have uh, Lady Macbeth by Ava Reed. Again, so I'll just quickly show you. The lady knows the stories that her eyes induce madness in men. The lady knows she will be wed to the Scottish brute who does not leave his warrior ways behind when he comes to the marriage bed. Uh, the lady knows his hostile, suspicious court will be a game of survival requiring all of her wiles um, and hidden witchcraft to survive. But the lady does not know her husband has occult secrets of his own. She does not know that prophecy girds him like armor. She does not know that her magic is greater and more dangerous and that it will threaten the order of the world. She does not know this yet, but she will. This reminds me of the Game of Thrones where it's like, uh, the lady must do this or the lady must do that um, when the guy with the, with the coin was speaking to Arya. <laughs> um, I mean, Scotland is mentioned. That's fun. There's a little dragon on the cover. I have read Study and Drowning, which actually this kind of made me think of because of the rivals and the setting um, by Ava Reed. I, did, I didn't hate it, I didn't love it. It was very man, looking back, it's very forgettable for me. Like I, if, you know, if I didn't have a prompt to remember, I probably wouldn't. Um, so it's not boding, like, but it does sound interesting. However, since I have heard that, that this is um, quite lyrical, like purple prose type of thing. So it might currently not very high on the TVR, let's say. Uh, on to cheerier things though, we have Heartstopper Volume 4. Um, this is just to add to my collection of the Fairlid ones. Cute, 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 certified cutie. We have the signature. I feel like all of you know what Heartstopper is, we don't need to read that. And then I have these two that kind of like come with the as a little set. So we have the Atlas of Us. Everyone gets a little lost sometimes, it says in the back. Um, with the with the edge and and paper and signature foil on here. Uh, Atlas James has lost her way, but she has one last chance to get her act together. A community service rehabbing trails in the Western Sierras. Uh, the only plus is that the work is so exhausting that Atlas might just be tired enough to forget that this was one of her dad's favorite places in the world before cancer stole him from her life, that is. Using real names is forbidden on the trail, so Atlas becomes Maps. <laughs> and with her team, Books, Sugar, Junior, and King, she heads into the wilderness. As she sheds all the lies she's built up as walls to protect herself, she realizes that four strangers might know her better than anyone has before. And with the end of trail uh, racing to meet them, Maps is left counting down the days until she returns to her old life without her new family and without kings who's become more than just a friend. It sounds like it'll be delightful, it sounds like it will be joyful and it will be sorrowful and it will be very introspective and very um, found family. Oh, I love it. Love the sound of that. Um, if you have read those though, do let me know so then I'm not like bamboozled if I don't, if you don't think I will like it. Home is where the heartache is. Some mistakes were made. Um, we have the end paper signature. We have the cover here. 
I think you were. Alice and Easton have been inseparable since childhood. Their friendship is unbreakable, or so Alice thought. I think you are. But when a rash decision throws Alice's life and her f f uh, relationship with East and into chaos, she's forced to finish her senior year halfway across the country, far from everything she's ever known. I think you will be. Alice hasn't spoken to Easton in a year. Maybe it's better that way. Maybe eventually the Easton shaved hole in her heart will heal. But when Easton mum's Easton's mum invites her home for a visit, Alice finds herself tang tangled up in the web of heartache, betrayal, and anger she left behind, and with the boy she never stopped loving. Told in alternating timelines. Kristen Dwyer's debut novel is a gripping look at the fallout left behind when the heart wants what it shouldn't. See, it's the little aspects like alternating um, timelines or putting people with fake names to then just go around and become a family that really intrigues me. This this sounds like the type of, if, if you know if it is, sounds like Chloe Brown adjacent. That's my hope. I've not read it, so I had no I have no idea if that's even remotely true. But that is my hope, and I am very excited for those. So definitely, let me know if you have uh, read that one. And now, are there any over the garden wall fans <laughs> next to us, among us? Um, because I have placed an order from a place called Knock Thrice. First of all, we're big fans of the word thrice in this household. Uh, we use it often. Came in this fun bag. And um, admittedly, these are not my best colors. Like, I love the colors as they are, but they're not my <laughs> best colors. For However, I thought like, oh, if it doesn't really fit me, I will give it to Logan as well, because uh, we can actually share most of the jumpers uh, for the upper body size. And I'm not gonna lie, the one of the main things... This is much stretchier, actually, than I thought it would be, which is nice, maybe. And we quote one particular thing and use, like, a gif for it or a meme for it uh, quite often. And honestly, this was the selling point. This is on a sleeve, and it says, Ain't that just the way? Ain't that just the way? Uh, this is what you say when shit happens, and you're just like, it's basically, it is what it is. Um, equivalent. It's just that ain't that just the way, like, you know, like, what are you gonna do? Um, but the design is one of those, you know, multi-colored ones. Um, so we have a burgundy color, which I do go with. <laughs> we have the green color, which I also kind of go with. And then we have this mustard color, which I don't. <laughs> it obviously has a frog on it, so immediate win as well. Um, let me just... <laughs> I mean, I'm wearing the t-shirt dress that I lounge in, so maybe not the best. Eh. But there you have it. I don't, like, <laughs> thing is, I don't normally wear these type of, uh, the crew neck type of jumper like this. But at the same time, I just could not resist. And again, if I'm not going to wear it, like, if I don't find that I reach for it because I don't love the shape. <laughs> I will always, you know, it won't go to waste because Logan will wear it and I will admire it on him. But now you're fully up to date with um, the things that arrived, I want to say. And because it is still the all-nighter, I feel like I've been blabbering here for way too long. We're down to five hours. Well, five hours fifty. <laughs> but still, gotta go. This is unacceptable. I should have done this afterwards. Okay, let's, let's go in and, and get some reading done. Okay, we have just over two hours left on the counter. Um, I was actually like 10 minutes away from like the estimated time of finishing the book just before <laughs> the uh, all-nighter ends, which I could have pushed for, but I'm really enjoying this book and I really don't want to like rush it in any sense. Not that I would have, but like I want to take my time with it basically. Um, so instead, I am gonna stop physically reading it, because reading to an audiobook, I think, for a little while whilst I pull out my crochet for the project that I refuse, first of all, because I have so much yarn for it, <laughs> like, all of, all of this yarn, um, but then also because I am so behind on this flower to cover project, I have not actually made one because I was making that pillow, the, the pillow from the previous one. 
I feel like I have, what, what you got? I've been menaces today. Uh, yeah, I feel like I've been not actually working on this project for a very long time, so much so. <laughs> I am currently behind, I think 13 books, 14 on the spreadsheet, but one of them is gonna be a DNF, I think. So I think that is a lot, <laughs> that is a lot. And it's funny cause I obviously been, you know, I made a lot so far. How many have we made? Um, 25 so far. So, you know, I kind of knew the pattern by heart now, but because it's been so long since I've done it, I feel like I literally have to have, um, like my notes app up again because I made notes. Is this even the right hook? I think it is the right hook. <laughs> yeah, this is how long it's been. I'm not joking. Um, but the next one that I need to make this for you know thankfully there are some ones that i really did not read much and that's gonna end up being quite a good thing for me catching up but i am devoted to trying to make this a thing despite now having fallen behind this next book that i'm going for was read in may <laughs> so that is how far behind we're going however uh you know it's exciting apart from i am also afraid that after all of this effort when it comes to the time to actually stitching it all together, I might just give up because <laughs> I hated tote bag only had like 20 something maybe squares to be stitched together. Um, this is going to have way more, but I really hated it. I really hated that part of the thing, but maybe, maybe I'll find a way that doesn't hurt as much. But anyway, the book that I'm gonna do is the beach read. Um, I'm thinking gonna do the sandy background, so that's gonna be the one. Is this the closest? This might be the closest. It's been so long that I don't even remember. I think this could be the closest. Obviously, this they don't match exactly because I don't have that many uh, shades. This is very sandy, but it is much darker, so we're not gonna use that. I do, however, have that that could also work. Be I'll see what the other tones are because this is a little bit too dark. But then this is a bit too cool toned. Oh, actually, this is very close. I hate the shade, but it is very close. If it was just a tiny bit warmer, that would have been like on point. I only have three colors to pick and we have more on this cover that is quite like an even spread. It would make sense to do the flower blue because that's obviously the next biggest color. Uh, but at the same time, when I think about this, I'm just thinking like the pinkish sky. Um, so I could do the middle blue because that's a circle and that looks like a little pool. <laughs> and then we can either go with like a peachy orange or a pink, depending on where we kind of land, I guess. It would look very beachy if I went terracotta, this one, and like that one. It's very beachy. I think we're gonna go with these, which are not the exact colors, but that's okay. That's not always. We're officially done with the all-nighter. Um, I definitely took a couple little breaks, but for the most part, I would say that I have continued reading, which was very, very nice. Um, not quite finished, but I did get to right here. So I think it was this bit that I read. Oh, maybe not. I don't know, actually. Whatever. I'm on page 212. Still very much enjoying it this is very very uh character based and i'm loving it you know i don't know if i mentioned this or not but i was kind of semi hoping this is gonna be what i kind of was looking for masters of death and while it is very different <laughs> in many ways i do think it kind of held up to that expectation uh, but also i finished uh the first square in a very long time now i kind of remember how to do it i hopefully will get more down at some point soon unfortunately the next one that i need to do is like um the book of the named midwife and it has a very boring colored cover so i'm not super excited about that but so i'm hoping to do it soon so then i don't actually just avoid it forever <laughs> but this is this is the result i think that's okay i think that fits it's pretty good um so we're kind of back at it now which is nice what we are at uh, before I go and tell people congratulations on surviving the all-nighter uh, we are at 10,459 books and 3.372 million uh, pages that is very nice <laughs>
I find it actually hilarious that this is the outro clip now because I have forgotten to <laughs> film a goodbye and the final wrap up and I don't know I for some reason I thought I did but I, I very much did not I did get a little bit more of Evocation Red. I am still very much enjoying it. I am not too far from the ending, but like from finishing it, but I'm not quite there yet. It has slowed down at certain points, which I don't personally mind, but I can see why people would perhaps find it a little bit boring considering that it's at the point where tensions should actually be amping up. Um, but anyway, I will update you on that fully next time and I hope that you were having a really good week. <laughs> Enjoy this pizza slicing clip. I will see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>